Can Israel rule the world? When last did you look at the U.S. Congress? Who controls the U.S. Congress? Huh? If Israel is controlling the U.S. Congress today, and that's what Ariel Sharon said, we control the United States. And if the United States is today the ruling state in the world, then the answer is that Israel is already ruling the world from behind the hijab. All that we need now is for the hijab to be removed. Why does Israel want to rule the world? Islamic eschatology will tell you why. My book is outside, entitled <laughs> Jerusalem in the Quran. It was written ten years ago. And for ten years it has provoked nothing but a silent response from Islamic scholarship. Only silence. They will not accept it and they will not attack it. I don't know why this mysterious silence. But the book has been largely accepted by those who are not the ulama. And we also have the book translated into Bahasa Malayu. And that translation is also outside, inshallah. Israel wants to rule the world because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a promise to Banu Israel that he's going to send to them a prophet who will be their prophet and will be known as the Messiah. You know this analysis already. You've been hearing me talking about this subject for so long. So I can speed it up. But when Allah sent the Messiah, he tested them, and they failed the test. Some of them accepted him. But the rest said, no, he is a bastard. When billah min hadha. How can a bastard be the Messiah? Allah tested them, and they failed the test. She was still a virgin, even after she had given birth to the baby. And then when he started performing miracles, Walking on water. Don't try it, huh? <laughs> giving life to the, giving sight to the blind. Bringing the dead back to life. It was a major embarrassment for them. Because they had said he's a bastard. And then when he said, I am the Messiah, that was the last straw. He has to go. And they held the kangaroo court and pronounced the death sentence, and then forced the hand of the Roman government. And then when they saw him die on the cross, and this lecture is coming up, when they saw him die on the cross before their very eyes, it was now confirmed beyond the shadow of a doubt, he could not have been the Messiah. Why? He's dead. He never ruled the world. The Messiah must rule the world. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam confirmed that. Hadith in Sahih Bukhari. The Nabi Isa alayhi salam would be Hakim. One who rules. Not downtown Chicago. No. He will rule with a rule which cannot be challenged and cannot be rivaled. That is a ruling state. That is my definition of a ruling state. But he's dead. So they said, we have to wait for the Messiah. Because you know, Allah is not like Washington. When Allah gives his word, he keeps his word. So the Messiah has to come. And they're waiting for the Messiah. All of Israel today is waiting for the Messiah. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam informed us and secular scholarship, they don't, they don't like this part of the lecture at all. They get up of the hall and leave and discuss. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam informed us that Allah in his wisdom created a being and programmed that being to impersonate the true Messiah and gave to him a PhD in deception. And he's known as Al-Masih al-Dajjal. Al 
And Masihu Dajjal is now so close to completing his mission of impersonation and of ruling the world from Jerusalem that I have been studying the subject for the longest while. And my view is that children now at school they live to see. That's how close we are. So Israel wants to become the ruling state for this reason. So that the Messiah can rule the world from Jerusalem. And when he declares himself the Messiah, and they accept him as the Messiah, incidentally, every Jew knows that this paper money is bogus and fraudulent and haram. Every Jew knows that. Every Jew knows that the temple in Jerusalem minted its own gold coins and silver coins. Every Jew knows that. And so Israel cannot fulfill its mission until Israel brings back an international monetary system based on gold and silver. Where did Imran Hussein get his knowledge from? Is he a prophet? Is there an angel or a jinn talking to him? No, you dumb dumb. This is analysis that comes from Islamic eschatology. The same one that you are scoffing at. And you'll never talk on this subject. But you'll, you'll explain and you will deliver long lectures and everything else, but you will never come to this subject. Tonight I'm exposing you. So that my people know who you are. This is Islamic analysis. That is secular. Was it two weeks ago? The state of Utah, the legislator, the, the House of Representatives in Utah enacted legislation to legalize the use of gold and silver coins as legal tender in Utah. And the bill is now waiting the signature of the governor. You know about that? And if Utah does it, there will be other states in the United States that will do it. Is this the beginning of what eventually will emerge as a new international monetary system based on gold and silver coins as money? The legal tender? Hmm? Where is the world of Islam? Where is the world of Islam? Israel wants to rule the world. So that that man can stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am the Messiah. But now we come to the heart of tonight's lecture. Appearance and reality. In order for Israel to rule the world, she will have to rule the Arab world, which surrounds her on all sides. The Arab world is not going to submit to Israel. If the Arab world can submit to Israel, then a cow can also jump over the moon. And so, is it possible that the Arab world is going to be attacked and decimated? And a large percentage of Arabs are going to be killed? Hmm? Is that possible? in order for it, make, for it to be easier for Israel to rule the world? Can there be a biological attack, for example? Did Prophet Muhammad Islam say that the Arabs are going to be wiped out by a plague? Go check your homework now. And did he say, in connection with Gog and Magog, read my book on Gog and Magog, he was asleep in the home of his wife, Zainab, radiallahu ta'ala anha. He woke up from his sleep. He had seen something terrible in his sleep. And he woke up with his face flushed red. And he said, Wailul lil Arab. Woe unto the Arabs. Min sharrin qadik taraba. Every Arab knows it. Woe unto the Arabs. He didn't say woe unto mankind. He said, woe unto the Arabs because of a great evil which is now close to them. And he raised his hands like this and made a...